Uh, we have now, of course, we've talked about osimertinib being approved uh, in the front line, but uncommon mutations. Uh, we see these uncommonly, um, <laughs> and uh, we're not really sure what to do with these. I think it's important, the message out there, to really look at the EGFR mutation that you've identified uh, in the tissue. So, Luda, you want to talk to us a little bit about the management of these, the data on afatinib and potential management of uncommon EGFR mutations? So uncommon mutations have been described in about 12% of the patients with EGFR mutations. There are three mutations that we see the most often. So there is um, um, G719X, which is in codon 18. There is L861Q, which is in codon 21. And S761, which is in codon 18. The only drug that we have currently approved for those uncommon mutations is afatinib. There's actually plenty of preclinical data and some early clinical data that in order to inhibit those uncommon mutations, all the first generation drugs need to have a pretty high IC50. So the IC50 for as, um, afatinib in cell cultures is less than 100. The IC50 of um, both gefitinib and erlotinib is between 100 to 800. Osimertinib is intermediate, and osimertinib seems to have a better efficacy in preclinical setting for L861Q mutation, and but some efficacy in preclinical setting for other mutation. We have some clinical data looking at the response rate in erlotinib and gefitinib, and they appear to be in approximately 25 to 30 percent. Afatinib does give us a response rate of 60 to 70 percent. There was an interesting poster just a couple of hours ago at ASCA looking at efficacy of osimertinib in the patients with uncommon mutations. Small number of patients, like five, six, seven per group, but it showed that patients with L861 mutation had 70% response to osimertinib. Patients with um, G719 have 50% response rate, and S7167 uh, seven, um, had 30% response to osimertinib, which is very consistent with the preclinical data, and I think gives some confidence that currently afatinib is a drug I would go to, but maybe in the future, once the data is more generated, maybe osimertinib could be an option there yeah. as well. Everyone, sorry. Uh, no, I was going to add the other uncommon mutation that you know is is in a little bit of a different category are the uh, exon twenty insertions in the GFR, yeah. and I think that is an important uh, subset to to really identify when you when you send off a GFR testing. The exon twenty insertions have really been shown in many many series to be refractory to first and second generation eGFR inhibitors. And right now, in a standard of care setting for those patients, I think chemotherapy is, is the first line therapy. But there are many clinical trials, and at ASCO this year, some exciting data with some new drugs, TAC788, pozoyotinib. I think there's more coming down the pipeline for exon 20 insertion patients. And that's another population where I think a referral for clinical trials can sometimes be very appropriate. Very good patient. point. I think we need to remember that not all eGFR if our mutations are the same, and that certainly we have the uncommon mutations, but then we have the exon 20 mutations, which are historically TKI refractory. Standard of care would be chemotherapy, but as you mentioned this year at ASCO, we've seen a lot of emerging data, posiotinib, a Takeda drug, uh, showing uh, selective activity uh, in these patients, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll be ready for prime time soon. But We're this, even testing osimertinib, actually, in that setting yeah. through a cooperative oncology group. The, so, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of movement here, so very exciting, but a, a distinction that needs to be made up front.